Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to talk about another sorting algorithm called heap sort. It's a very famous algorithm. It combines the better attributes of both insertion sort and merge sort, which are two sorting algorithms that we just talked about in the in the previous weeks. So if you missed that, I'll put links down below in the description box. Feel free to check it out to review. The running time of heap sort is O n log n, which is very ideal. And heap sort is it's similar to insertion sort, but unlike merge sort in the context that heap sort doesn't use any extra space. It's it's using constant O1 extra space, while merge sort uses extra memory. That's what I mean by heap sort combines the better attributes of both insertion sort and merge sort. With that said, let's dive into more details about heap sort. All right, first let's talk about what is a heap. This is a data structure. A heap it has to be a balanced binary tree. What that means is either the lowest level or the level above the lowest level must all have leaves. A leaf is at the bottom layer. It doesn't have any other children. That's what a leaf means by definition. Or in other words, the tree is completely filled on all levels except possibly the lowest, which is filled from the left up to a certain point. Or in the most simple terms, what it means is a nearly complete binary tree. It's almost complete. It could be a completely full binary tree. That's also a valid heap. But in other cases, it's nearly completely full. Let's take a look at this randomly ordered array. Here are the indices of this array elements. How we're going to map this into a valid heap, we can simply put the first one is going to be the root of the heap. Again, a heap is a binary tree. So the first one is just going to be the root of the binary tree. And following the rest, everything on the right of this first element, we'll just put them as the children of this root node from left to the right. Okay, so 14 is the left child, 10 is the right child. And at this moment, we can take a look. So how do we map the relationships between the parents and the children? So we need some indices to help us to do so. What we need is these three formulas. Given a child index, we can use this, the first formula, to compute its parent index. For example, the child index is two. So two divided by two is one. That means the parent index of this one is one, which is correct, right? And then also given a parent index, we can use the last two formulas to compute its two children's indices. For example, the parent index is one. So one times two is two. That's why the left child of one is two, index as two. And again, two times one plus one is three. That's why the right child of this one is three, indexed at three. These are the three formulas that we're going to need to manipulate the elements based on the indices of the elements inside this array. And on most computers, this could be easily achieved by shifting the binary representation of i to the left. This is how we can achieve this by shifting binary representation of i to the left by one bit position to get the left child. And we can do the same to shift the binary representation of i to the left by one position and plus one. That's going to give us the right child. And similarly, we can shift the binary representation of the child index to the right by one position to get its parent index. On most computers, we can do that which makes things very efficient. All right, with that said, we'll continue to map the remainder of this array into a valid heap structure. So eight, continue, seven, nine, three, two, four, and one. So we keep mapping things from the left towards the right. That's how we can map any randomly ordered array into a valid heap data structure. With that said, we can talk about there are two types of heaps. One is called max heap. What that means is for every node i other than the root, the parent of node i is always greater than or equal to this node itself. In other words, the value of a node is at most the value of its parent. It couldn't be bigger. That's what it means, which indicates the largest element in the max heap is at the root level. Min heap, very simple, a different type of heap. The reason it's called min heap is that is because it's the opposite of max heap, which means for every node i other than the root node, its parent is going to be guaranteed smaller than or equal to i. The value of a node is at least the value of its parent. 
that's what it means. That means the smallest element in the mean heap is sitting at the root. Now let's talk about what's the definition of the height of a binary tree or a heap. We define the height to be the number of edges on the longest simple downward path from the node to a leaf. Remember, a node to a leaf. For example, if we take the node with value 7, this one has a height of 1. That is because there is only one edge between this one to its next leaf. That's why this node with value 7 has a height of 1. So now we define the height of a heap. That is, the height of its root is going to be the height of the heap. So looking at this heap, the height of this heap is 3 because from the root all the way to the leaf, there are three edges, one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, three, right? Three edges. So the height of this heap is three. Why are we talking about this? Let's see. Now we know the number of edges in the longest path for this given example is three. Let's think about the minimum and maximum number of nodes in the heap. So the minimum number of nodes in the heap is going to be two to the power of h. h in this case is three. So the minimum number of nodes is going to be 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. So it's going to be a tree like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's a total of 8 nodes in this heap. This is a heap that has the minimum number of nodes in order to make it a valid heap. We couldn't have one last node in this heap, given the height of the heap is 3. Now let's think about the maximum number of nodes in the heap. Apparently, it's going to be, we can make this one a completely full binary tree. That's going to be the maximum number of nodes in the heap that's possibly allowed with a height of 3, right? So that's going to be looking like this. A total number of nodes in this example is going to be 15. How can we map 15 to the height of the binary tree? That's going to be 2 to the power of h plus 1. The result of that is going to minus 1. That's going to give us 15. So 3 here, 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16 minus 1 is 15. So that's going to be giving, giving us a tree like this. Again, why are we talking about this? Let's see. We need to know the number of nodes of n. Suppose n means the number of total nodes in this given binary tree or this heap. So now we know n is within this range. It is greater than or equal to 2 to the power of h or smaller than or equal to 2 to the power of h plus 1 minus 1. This is the range of this number of nodes. How we can simplify this? We can simplify this to be like this. We simply strip off this minus 1 and remove this equal sign. That means we have added 1 to this, which means it's going to be guaranteed exactly greater than n. And how can we even simplify this or convert this to something more meaningful? We can apply logarithm function to all three parts of this formula. That's going to give us this. So we strip off 2 and we put logarithm function to this middle part and then we can take off this two here as well. And what this means in big O notation or in algorithm analysis, it's going to give us in theta notation, it could be written as height is in theta notation of log n. n is the number of nodes in the binary tree. That is why the basic operations on heaps run in time at most proportional to the height of the tree. Therefore, it is log n time. With that said, let's talk about one very important procedure call. We call it max heapify or heapify. This is a call to maintain the max heap property. A max heapify assumes the subtrees rooted at the left side and the right side, they are both max heaps already, which means they satisfy the max heap properties. Only that the AI, the node that we are traversing right now, might be smaller than its children, either its left or right child. Thus, it's violating the max heap property. So what we need to do is this max heap function is going to let the value at AI float down gradually in the max heap so that the subtree will still obey the max heap property. Let's take a look at this simple binary tree on the left side. Is this a valid heap, max heap? No, apparently it's not. Looking at this node with value 2, this one. This one is smaller than both of its left and right children. So this is not a valid max heap, right? So what we will do is we'll move this one down, float this one gradually down, right? Assuming both of its left and right subtrees are both valid max heaps. 
which is true in this case, right? This subtree starting with the root of node of value 14 is a valid max heap. And this one is a valid max heap as well. So we'll call max, max heapify on this node. So this one is going to be switched down, moved, gradually moved down. Now this one is invalid max heap, but how about this subtree? No, it is not. So we'll continue to call this max heapify two is going to be switched with eight. Now this part is invalid max heap so that this entire part is also a valid max heap. And the time complexity of calling this max heapify is OH, which is the height of the heap. As you can see, it takes O1 time, basically const time, to fix up the relationship between the elements, the root node and its left and right children. In the worst case, we'll have to perform this, uh, this operation at every level of this subtree. As you can see, we performed this O1 constant time operation at this level, at this level, right? So this max heapify operation yields OH time complexity. This is O log n, where n is the number of elements in this entire tree. Now let's take a look at this example that we looked in the very beginning of this video. We're given this randomly ordered array, the second half of this array, all of them they are what mapped into this heap in this visual representation we see all of the last half the second half of the array they are all leaves in the heap right so how can we implement this build max heap procedure call easy what we can do is we can just go from the last one of the first half which is seven all the way to the first one we'll call max heapify that's going to give us so we call seven now eight we keep decrementing i, then 10, then 14, then 16. We go all the way to the first element of the given index. After we call max heapify for the first half of the given array, then we have built in max heap. If that's kind of abstract, let's just build in max heap from an unordered array from scratch. Suppose we're given this random array, this is the index of this array. How can we build in max heap from this? First, We'll put everything into the heap representation. So this is how we put an array into a heap. This is not a max heap yet. This is just a heap. We are using a heap representation to represent this array. How we did that is remember, this is the indices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from left to right. This is how we constructed this binary tree. Remember, this is not a valid max heap yet. Now, what we will do is we will, from the last element of the first half of this array, we will call max heapify. That means we'll start from this one, 16, right? Which is the last element of the first half. The first half is one, two, three, four, five. These five elements, this is the first half of the given input, as we saw in the previous slide. So the first one we're going to call the max heapify procedure call is 16. How do we max heapify 16? We compare with its left and right children. It doesn't have a right child, so we'll compare with its left child. It's actually greater than its left child, so we don't need to do anything. We move on. We move on to this one. I is decrementing always. We move on to this one. This one has a value of two. Two is actually smaller than both of its left and right children. What we're going to do is we'll swap it up with 14. Now, this one is a valid max heap, this subtree, right? So we'll continue to decrement I in this case. So I becomes at index three. That is this one. This one, is this one a valid max heap for this subtree? No, it's not. We're going to swap it up with 10. 10 is going to be swapped to this root position. I is going to be two. Two is here. So we'll see, is this a valid max heap? Apparently it's not. It's smaller than both of its left and right children. So we'll, what we will do is we'll swap it up with 16. 16 is going down. Now we'll continue to call max heapify on this one because this one is not greater than its children, right? Its left child is not. So we'll swap it out also. Now we'll keep decrementing i until the first element, which is one. In this case, this is four. Is four a valid position? No, it's not. We need to swap it. So four is going to be switched with 16. Is this one a valid heap? No, it's still not. So we'll swap it down. Is this one a valid one? No, it's not. Continue to swap it. At this point, this is a valid max heap. 
So we have finished building a valid max heap from a randomly ordered array by following these two simple lines of pseudocode. What this means again is we start from the last element of the first half of the given input array. We go all the way down until the first element. Along the way, we call max heapify on every single element of the first half. That's how we achieved it. The time complexity of this build max heap is going to be O n. It's not actually O n log n. The main reason is this build max heap algorithm. The actual heapify cost is not O log n for all elements. When this max heapify is called, the running time depends on how far an element might move down in the tree before the process terminates. In other words, it totally depends on the height of the element in the heap. In the worst case, the element might go down all the way to the leaf level. The detailed mathematical analysis is beyond the scope of this video. But for us right now, let's just keep in mind the time complexity of building a max heap or just building a valid heap is going to be O n. Now let's talk about heap sort, the meat of this program. All of the time that we spend up to now is to help us prepare for the introduction of heap sort. Now let's get to it. Again, suppose we are given this randomly ordered array. How can we use heap sort to sort this array into the correct ascending order? Let's take a look at the pseudocode of this heap sort. We'll look at the pseudocode first, and then we'll write everything into real Java code to help people better understand how we can implement this in real code. So the first step is that we're going to call build max heap. This is the function that we just went through. So I'll just put the max heap, a valid max heap here and this is the array after we have built this valid max heap is going to be switched like this if you don't recall just go back a few minutes and revisit it so what we're going to do is that we're going to start from the last element of this array here or here the first step what we're going to do is that we're going to swap it with the root of this max heap which is going to be what the guaranteed max of the current valid heap right and then we'll strip this off of this heap, put this into the correct position of this array. That's why we decrement the size of the heap, which means we strip this one off and put the current max value to this position. At that point, this one is going to be at the root position. Remember, we call it swap. At that point, this one, the remaining tree is not a valid heap anymore because this one is one. It's almost guaranteed that it's smaller than its left and right children. What are we going to do? We're going to call max heapify on this position on the root node. So we call max heapify on the position with the index of one. So we'll continue to call this until there's only one element in the heap then that one is guaranteed to be the smallest of all of the elements in the given array. Then we're done. Heap sort is, is finished. If that's kind of abstract, now let's just walk through how this process is really working. The first step is that we have built this max heap already. This is the max, max heap that we have built after calling this one line of pseudocode. So now this part of the walkthrough is going to be focusing on the for loop inside this for loop. So start from i equals to 10. So we do a swap. Swap with what? with the root node, right? A1 is the index of one, which is the root node. Now we decrement the size of the heap by one. That means we'll just cut off this edge of this heap in the in our visual representation. So we put this one into the correct position of the final sorted array. And then what are we going to do? Apparently we swapped one to this position and this violates the max heap property. So we're going to call max heapify on this element, call max heapify. We swap one with 14, and then this one is still violating max heap property. So we call max heapify on that. Keep calling max heapify on this one. It goes down here. Now the remaining of this tree is still a valid max heap. So at this point, we decrement i by one. All right, now i is nine. So we'll continue to follow this, the instructions of this for loop. We'll swap. Now swap 14 with one. Swap. Next, we'll decrement the size of the heap by cutting off the edge in the visual representation. So now 14 is put into the correct position, right? Now, one is still violating the max heap property. It's again at the root of this entire tree. So we'll continue to call max heapify on root node. So one is going to be swapped with 10. And then we'll continue to call max heapify on this one. This one is going to be swapped with nine. All right. Now, this is good. We'll continue to decrement i again. 
boom, i is 8. Swap with root node 2 and 10. They are swapped. Continue to call. Then we decrement the size of the heap. All right. Now 10 is put into the correct position. Then we have to call max heapify on the root node, which is 2. Max heapify. Swap with 9. Is this a valid max heap for this subtree? No, it's not. Max heapify on 2. 2 and 3 are swapped. At this point, we're done here. We'll continue to decrement i. i is 7 now. 7, all right, swap, swap 2 and 9. Now we have to decrement the size of the heap by 1 by cutting off the edge in the visual representation again. So 9 is put into the correct position. Now we call max heapify of 2. 2 is swapped with 8, should be swapped with 7. Now we continue to swap. The remainder of the binary tree is still a valid heap, so we'll continue to decrement i by 1. What are we going to do? Swap with the root node, which is 8. Now we swapped. Next is we decrement the size of the heap by cutting off the edge in the visual representation and put 8 into the correct position. Now we call max heapify of 1. This is the root node which is violating the max heap property, right? Next, swap with 7. This is still violating, so we swap with 4. All right, this is good. So we continue to decrement i to be 5. Now we swap 2 and 7. 2 and 7 need to be swapped, 7 and 2. We decrement the size of the heap by 1, so by cutting off the edge here and putting 7 into the correct position. Now we'll call max heapify again here on 2. 2 is smaller than both of its left and right children, so we have to call max heapify. Now 2 and 4 are swapped. The remainder of the tree is invalid max heap, so we stop. Now continue to decrement i. i is 4. 4, we have to swap with 1. All right, now we swapped. Now we decrement the size of the heap by cutting off the edge now and put 4 into the correct position. Now we call max heapify on 1. 1 needs to be swapped with 3. Now this is a valid max heap. We're good. Now we continue to decrement i is going to be 3. Now i is 3. 3 swap with 1. These two swap. Now decrement the size of the heap by cutting off the edge and putting 3 into the correct position. Now there are only two elements in the binary tree and this is not a valid heap so we need to call max heapify. Swap these two. Continue to decrement i. i is going to be 2. So 2 is going to be swapped with 1. Now it's swapped. We decrement the size of the heap by cutting off the edge and putting 2 into the correct position. Now we call max heapify. There is only one element then we're done. At this moment, we break out of this for loop. Remember, i needs to be exactly greater than 1, which means the last element that we're going to execute is going to be 2. Now we put 1 into the final correct position. Now we can see this is the correct order from the originally randomly ordered array input. Now this is correctly ordered ascending order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 16. All right. Now let's talk about the time complexity. What's the time complexity of heap sort? This is the heap sort. This is the pseudocode of heap sort. So let's analyze this line by line. Mute max heap. What's the time complexity of this? Remember, we talked about that. It's going to be O n. Now we have a for loop. This for loop is going to run n times. Or to be precise, it's going to be run n minus 1. So in big O notation, it's going to be O n, right? So we put it as O n. Swap is just a very simple constant operation. So it's going to be O 1. And heap size decrement, this is also going to be a constant time. Now, max heapify, if you recall this, this is totally a proportional to the height of the tree, which is to the logarithm of the number of nodes. That's going to be O log n, right? And then this is going to give us the entire time complexity of the heap sort is going to be what? It's going to be O n times log n. Why is this? There's a for loop here. It's going to be this O n times O log n because every single element minus one element is going to be needed to consume O log n time. That's why this entire time complexity of heap sort is going to be O n log 